You're listening to the JFDI podcast with the two Lauras. And in this episode, we're talking about how it all began and our JFDI attitude. Their names are the same, good friends they became. Together they put their brains and magic happened. I'm talking about the two Lauras, they'll be your biggest supporters. What the sand and you'll need more of. I'm talking about the two Lauras. I'm talking about the two Lauras. So we had a question from one of our Inner Hub members, which was from Sarah. And she asked us, were you scared about starting the hub? And if so, how did you get over that and JFDI? So... If you are, if you're not used to the, the saying JFDI, it's just beep, do it. I didn't put the F in just in case you do have children around, but you can imagine what the F is. Laura has a big sign of JFDI in her office, which I'm looking at right now. But yeah, that is our whole mindset, isn't it? Just yeah. do it. Yeah. You never know unless you try is our, I suppose, motivates us a lot. Um, and I think we've always probably, oh, well, I don't know, I won't speak for Laura, but before Laura and I joined forces, I was always someone who just was like, oh, well, I'll just do it and just see what happens. I am, I suppose, I wouldn't say I'm a risk taker. I'm quite a cautious person generally. But I think within our, when we're looking at our freelance businesses, there's not a lot that can go wrong, really. You know, you're not risking anything by putting yourself out there or, you know, if something doesn't work, you know, what's the worst that can happen. And I think that has always been the way I have approached my work. And and it's done it's done me well. And so obviously I'm assuming Laura has probably been of a similar vein. So when we met, it very quickly became clear that that was how we both approach things. Were you always yeah. have you always been a bit I'm not a ditherer. <laughs> like silly dallying around, just skirting around the issue. That's not me. I'm very much a straight talking, say what you mean, get on and do it kind of person. So, yeah, JFDI is like my motto. Yeah, I've never met someone. This is so this is how it generally works for Laura and I. We'll sit down and say, right, we've got to do this. So then I'll go, okay, I'll get my notebook out. I'll write it on my long list of things that need to be done. By the time that I then look up again, she's done it. Uh, she will just do it. Things don't go on her list. She'll just do it, which is a great um, way to be. Don't just do it. Then it doesn't ever get done. Yeah, see, I'm I'm very much like that in my personal life. Like if people send me a text message, I'll reply straight away because if I don't reply there and then, I will never reply. And that's a, a lot of things. Like the kids walk in with their letters from school. I've got to deal with it straight away because it will never get done. I'm... I am a little bit like that with some elements of work. Like obviously, like if an invoice comes in, I will pay it straight away because I'd hate to forget. And so I just get it done, which I'm not necessarily is, is probably the right way to be because then you, the danger is you jumping around all the time. But you are like a, a machine when it comes to just, just getting things done. With a, like with a, and I always thought I was until I met you. But I am also the worst person that if I don't start it and finish it, then it will never get finished. It will just stay there as it is, not not done, because I lose interest so quickly. Yeah, see, I think I've got slightly longer attention span than you, although not that much longer. Which is not what worked out that our attention spans clearly are very good because we haven't even answered the question. <laughs> I love this podcast to talk about. <laughs> Right. So, so yeah. Uh, so go back to your question. Your original question from Sarah was, were you scared about starting the hub? And if so, how did we get over that and just do it? Well, I think it's fair to say that the hub really wasn't in our, in our vision when we very, very first started working together. To take you kind of right back to the start, the reason Laura and I even started working together because we we just happened to have a conversation one day where we talked about the fact that a lot of freelance social media managers would send us DMs and say, oh, how do you do this? And, oh, you know, I love following you. And, I'm, you know, how did you win these clients? Where do you find your clients? If I've talked about on my stories doing a proposal, people would say, oh, would you mind me asking what you put in your proposals? And, and Laura was the same. So we had this conversation where we realised that actually 
there was a need out there that people were struggling with with these kind of elements of, of being freelance. And being freelance can be really difficult if you've come from an employed background. It's quite a shift, isn't it? I think there's this perception, isn't there, that you have to know how to do everything and you can train to do social media. You may know the front and back of Instagram and be the best person at, at Instagram, but that doesn't mean you know how to run a business and how to get clients and, you know, what to do when a client questions your feeds or, you know, and, and all the other things that come with it. We were kind of seeing a lot of people who were going and doing courses, learning how to be social media managers. And that was all they were learning was how to do the job, not how to build a business. Yeah. Yeah. So we decided to create the Social Media Managers Toolkit, which is as it is now. It has grown and changed quite a lot over the, the few years that it's been in existence. So our plan was to just have this toolkit. So when people were to then continue to send us a DM, either of us could give someone the link and they could buy it. And that was as kind of complicated as, as it needed to be. Yeah, so that was our plan. There was no grand strategy. There was no, let's have a free Facebook group. There was no, you know, let's have a, an inner hub. There was nothing. That It was just, let's create a product, a digital product that answered that problem that people were having. And then... By an unfortunate turn of events, or maybe fortunate, depends how you look at it. Well, in our, it turned out to be very fortunate, but someone, without us asking, someone just promoted this toolkit in a group, which it, it didn't go down very well. We were unaware that this had been shared and suddenly we'd been kicked out of this group and we were like, why? Well, what have we done wrong? And this group was full of social media managers and so we decided, let's just create our own little group because lots of people come into us saying, this is disgraceful. This is awful. I can't believe you've been checked out. So we said, well, let's just set up a little group. Really, with the view that we just had a little pool of people who were kind of our friends and were equally annoyed that this had happened. But that was that. Again, there was no grand plan. But that group grew rapidly to, I don't know, it was well over kind of 2,000 people within weeks, wasn't it? it and that's when we, and we hadn't even launched the toolkit. Well, when we say launched, we again, no, had made <laughs> no launch plans, but it wasn't in existence at that point. We were just kind of finalising it. Yeah, so the group happened by accident. So we then bought the toolkit launch forward. It sold phenomenally, phenomenally, can't say that word, well. And it made us go, you know what, there's a need here. There is a massive need. But I wouldn't even say at that point, we then said, right, well, this is our big grand plan. Let's write a 10-year business plan. Let's. It, we were never like that and, and still not very like that. We are very reactive in what we do. We wait for there to be a sign of a need and we will then go and hopefully try and fill that need. We're not really big planners, are we? No. And like we were talking just yesterday, weren't we, about having to plan for next year? Yeah thought of that just makes me fill with dread like planning next week is hard enough let alone planning 12 months in advance yeah and I think as we've just said Laura and I both don't have a big attention span so for us to say right well next January we can do this next, next we're going to do this and by next December we will have achieved this like that like I can put money on what even what we've said we'll do in February and we're now in October will not happen we just don't work like that. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think people feel like when they launch something or launch a business, they have to, to do it in a very kind of, you know, you used to have to go to the bank, didn't you? Go to a bank with a business plan, you get a business bank account. I just don't think you have to do that. Well, you don't. Well, you don't. We didn't even have a business name. When we no? Yeah. Like, we don't have our own business platforms. We didn't have a business bank. Well, we had a business bank account, but it was just in your name, wasn't it? We didn't have a bank account together. We didn't have a website. No. We didn't have any of that stuff. And so like the question was, were we scared before we do it? Did it? No, because we didn't know we were going to do it. Yeah. I'm sure like some psychologists would, could analyse that. I wonder whether the reason we don't get scared is because we don't allow ourselves to get scared 
by allowing us to think about things. And actually, I know, I know when we've said, oh, let's do this, let's do that. And it's pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. We're going to book it in, let's do it in three months' time. We have never, ever, ever carried through. We've carried through once, which have was a we? breakthrough festival. Oh, yeah. We did go ahead and do, but in the run up to that, because we'd planned it so far in advance, we hadn't planned it, we put it in the diary, we talked about it so far in advance. It then was like a weight on our shoulders, wasn't it? Yeah. I would do it. Yeah. We were put right off it, right up to the very like, hour before we started doing it, delivering our first thing. Yeah, we couldn't wait for it to be over. Yeah. But then as soon as it was over, we were like, oh my God, that was brilliant. I want to do it again. Yeah. And I don't know, we say this, you know, we're just answering a question, I guess. And we're not saying that this is how everybody should be because it's just not in some people's nature, is it? Some people just are more cautious. Some people like to have a plan. But I guess. The point is sometimes we can plan everything, can't we? And we can, but really the plans are just stopping us from actually doing what it is that we need to get done. So we aren't massive planners in terms of long-term plans. Like when it comes down to, right, we are going to create this, we are going to launch on this date, we will be much more strategic. We will sit down and have a proper plan for everything, a content plan, you know, a full marketing plan, a launch plan. We'll have an everything plan, but it's very immediate and what needs to happen now and in the coming few weeks. We don't, like if someone was to say, oh, so what, what are the plans, you know, for your business in 2022? Well, we, you know, we've got a rough idea of things we want to do, but that's it. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to say, on September 25th, 2022, we're going to do blah, blah. <laughs> no, that's not how it work at all. And I think, you have to remember, really, we were talking about this again yesterday, weren't we, that our business, the large majority of our business has been in a global pandemic. We'd only been around nine months, I think it was, or eight months before the first lockdown in March 2020. So more of our business has been through a global pandemic than not. So we have had to learn to work around life, you know, homeschooling, kids off with COVID, which I'm currently experiencing at the moment. It had to make us be quite um, nimble in how we move and work with our business because that has to work for us. We have to be able to work flexibly. And I would, I literally get twitchy if we put things in the calendar too far ahead because I'm like, oh, hang on, I don't know, you know, is this going to happen? What happens if the kids are off again? What happens if this, what happens if that? So actually, instead of giving ourselves that stress and that worry, we just don't commit to anything. And that has been good for us as well, because it hasn't just helped us in terms of our kids being at home and what have you. It's meant that we've been able to help our people with what's happening. So like with the first, the very first lockdown, because we didn't have loads of things planned, we were immediately able to offer help and yeah. give them what they needed at that point. Yeah, I think we are and have been very reactive to situations. You know, we created... We, I think we did a Zoom call, didn't we, within... Yeah, like the first day or two of lockdown. Yeah, and I think we we put together a guide, didn't we? A guide to help people to promote their businesses or to help their clients through COVID. Yeah. yeah. None of us had seen that before, and we just wanted to make sure that we could help people to navigate through that. And I think that's what we always do, isn't it? Try and be receptive to what people need at that time. Yeah, and at the moment, I cannot say us being reactive in how we work has had any negative impact no I think other people around us can't would find it absolutely astonishing that we don't really strategically our team may not be overly happy with how reactive we are and how often we change things yeah yeah like this week we're now going to do this (laughs) yeah but normally when we're reactive and we change our plans the biggest impact it has is on us rather than our team I think if it had a bigger impact on our team I think we'd probably be a little bit more cautious because we are, we do try to think of other people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just us then that when we're, we're drowning in our to-do lists. <laughs> I think there's a lesson to be learned from us though, isn't there? Because quite often we'll see people in our Facebook groups who are at that point where they're starting their business and they're being held back because they don't have a business name or they haven't done a website yet. Or they don't think they can launch because they haven't set up their socials yet and they can't do that because they don't have a business name or a website. Or And there's always these things holding them back. And I think 
that JFDI mentality that we have where we would just go and do it because all of those things can happen later. And even if you have got those things, like who's to say they're not going to change? Like we originally, when we first started promoting our business, we went by the hub for social media managers. Well, that's a bit too long to sell a podcast. And now people know us as the two Lauras. And that's to do before that, before we were the hub for social media managers, we were the social media manager toolkit. That was well, that was what in the very early days, that was us. And we look at the branding that we kind oh, of used then. <laughs> um it, like we we have come a long, 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 long way. And I, and a lot of a lot of you obviously come a long, long way with us. Um, waited until we had all that in place. Our business wouldn't even be launched yet. No. Because in theory, we probably still haven't got everything in place. Well, in fact, we know we haven't. Okay. You know, and there's there's lots of things in our business that because maybe we're reactive and because we don't have a really structured plan of how we kind of navigate certain elements of our business, maybe to, to other people would be really difficult for them to, to come in on that. But it is just the two of us. So it, from that perspective, it doesn't matter that our G drive is a mess. <laughs> because it works. If we were waiting for our G drive not to be a mess before we launched our business, then literally we would never, ever launch our business. <laughs> yeah. It's so bad. And our Canva. Yeah. I do think the lesson is there that we, you know, you should just never let things get in your way. The amount of people who say, well, I just don't know my name, my business name. So I can't start until I've got a business name. It's just like, yes, you can. You've got a name. Use that. Yeah, like Laura Moore was so creative. She called her business Laura Moore. My theory is if you are a freelancer working on your own and like haven't got any grand plans to grow an agency or, you know, maybe not within a few years and you want people to hire you, they want to know who you are and use your name. I, I agree and I disagree. I think it depends on your name. Yeah, but I mean, if you can't think of a business name and you just want to get going, just... Yeah, yeah. Like, if it's stopping you, then absolutely. But I think, like, I would never have called my business Laura Davis. I'm the golfer. Is it? Everyone would, yeah, she's some famous golfer with Laura Davis. And Davis is just such a common name. But nah, nah. So I was virtually savvy. But I sat down one night and I said, right, I need to think of a name. I wrote pages and pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of possible names. I then went through them all again and across that all the ones that I hated or definitely didn't knew I didn't want to, to kind of be associated with. I then went on to like one, two, three, reg or whatever and tried to find the domains. Then I had a, then a short list of which ones have the domains available. So then I went on social media to see which ones I could get that handle or near enough, you know, using an underscore or what have you. And I think I was left with two and virtually savvy was one of them. That, and that was it. The, the, the decision had been made within, a, you know, yes, it was an arduous task. And I know my husband dreaded that day that I had to sit there going through this long list of names that quite frankly, he couldn't give a shit about it. But I, you know, did it, made a decision, moved on, started the next, you know, the next day it was, I created all my platforms, registered the domain and moved on. No one apart from you gives a shit about your business name. No, no one gives a shit about it, but I do think there are some shit names. Oh yeah, definitely. But like, no one really cares as much as you do. No. So don't let it hold you back for days or weeks or months on end. No. Just make sure that when you, you know, put two words together, it doesn't spell anal in the middle or anal bum party or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. Or when you do the letters of the name, it doesn't spell bum or something. There are some, you know, it's like problems you could come across. But yeah, I think you either just need to make a decision and go with it with, with a business name. But if it's holding you back and you've been going round in circles, then yeah, just use your own, like, personal name yeah we digress massively how about the surprise so i think we've answered the question so in summary just fucking do it and if you're not part of the hub that has now grown to over i think six thousand freelance social media managers you're more than welcome to come and join us and if you want to ask us any questions for us to discuss on future podcasts we are going to pop a link in the show notes so feel free to use that we'd love to answer any of your questions within reason 
We'd love it if you would subscribe to all these future episodes. And also, if you want to give us a cheeky little review, we would be ever so grateful.